Okay, continuing this. I was working on direct adjustments all through the last video, correcting the color of these different layers, right? So I'm just on my last ones. I have played with, let's see, go back in my history here. Come on. The levels, just the levels of this. So I brightened it up a little bit so I have more of that rock texture. So the next one I would do after levels is color balance. And now that I'm getting into the extreme foreground, I can be a little more whimsical with this and just kind of play it up for color and texture. Because this color temperature doesn't necessarily have to match the background or even the middle ground color temperature. It just has to kind of lead into it. So color temperature is something that changes with depth. So the most traditional way is to have cool color temperatures in the background and then warm color temperatures in the foreground because warms come forward in our eyesight. But as long as it's kind of transitioning, you can, you can enjoy being a little bit more whimsical with it. So I can't make it like that and have it work. But what I can do is be a little bit more uh, color forward with it in the foreground. I'm going to push it a little bit more towards those yellows. Yeah, I think that works. All right, and then the hue saturation. Oh, and then I'm also, this is a good time to remind you, I'm going to really push that saturation. But don't get fed up with this and just take the saturation down on everything and make it black and white. <laughs> it will make it look more believable, but it will cost you the opportunity of adjusting and playing with color, which is one of the things we're learning. And it will make it so that this project isn't as useful to you later on. So do keep some color in your project, even if you want pretty low saturation. But I'm going to really intensify these colors in the foreground. Okay, next, we're going to play with this element, which is my dark element. And it looks terrible right now. It looks blurry and yellow and gray. So I'm going to shift it. Oops, wrong one. I'm going to shift its levels. First, under image adjustments, I'm going to try shifting them darker, and then I immediately lose pixels. So instead, I'm just going to limit the highlights on it so it stays in shadow. Next, I'm going to play with its color. I'm going to play with its midtones first, and I'm going to push it towards the blues and purples. And then I'm going to push its highlights opposite because I want to get as much color variation as I can because the reference was pretty blah. But I like the shape. And then, now that I've gotten that color into it, when I go to hue saturation, I should be able to exaggerate those color tones a little bit within reason like that okay now I can go back to levels because you can repeat these three steps as much as you like and maybe I can give it a little bit more contrast and let me see one more time to levels and let's darken those shadows a bit. Okay, now I have adjusted the direct adjustments for all of them, and it makes me feel like this is the one that lets me down. I like the watercolor a lot, but I don't love this. And so one way to work with that is to composite in another element. So I can go back to some of the things I've 
referenced. And maybe there's something cool I could use to augment that foreground. So there's these kind of green slippery rocks here. So what if I just quickly put that in and rough cut around them, right? And then Command-J. And then I'll play with, I'm going to sink it down, you know, below some of the others. Right. But between these two, I think I might get something I like a little bit more. I do like that edge quite a bit. But the color is all wrong. Right. And even though there's some cool stuff in here, I don't think I'm going to give myself more to work with. So I'm just going to erase that for now. Okay, now with this new layer... Image adjustments, start with levels, mid-tone slider. I'm going to keep it about where it was. Limit the highlights a little bit. Then I'm going to go to color balance. This will make a big difference because it's very green right now. I'm going to push those mid-tones towards the magenta. I'm going to push a little bit towards blue, a little bit towards cyan. And then the shadows, I'm going to go hard towards blue. So you just got to play with these. And then the highlights, I'm going to go towards yellow. <coughs> then I'm going to go back to levels again. I'm going to see if that kind of makes a difference. Like, can I push them darker while limiting the shadows? No, not really. All right. So that gives me another element to play with to give some variation. Now I'm going to save Command-S, and we only have a few minutes left of class. So this is a good place to leave it for today. And what I'm going, going to do is to make sure I've posted my sketch in, in Canvas, in the project, because that's one of the requirements. And then this will be due next class, which will be February 5th. But we'll be working on it through class, up through at least half of the class, and then cleaning up those, those edges and making everything kind of fit believably together. So I have to get rid of this, I have to blend it with the sky, you know, there's, there's lots still to do, but it's all doable. I also will need to do the kind of clean cutouts, right, of all of this stuff. And so we're going to learn a lot more about how to use your lasso to get nicely cleaned cutouts, how to use a feather, we'll be using our tablets more, but it's all going to happen. So to save it, you say you first save it as a PSD <coughs> onto your desktop. I like to mark it with green, so I know that that's the most recent one. Then I can close PhotoP. And then I want to save this in two places. So I'm going to save it to my class folder, which is here. Drag and drop it in. And then I can organize it into my assignment one folder. And so the green helps me recognize it. This is the one I'm working on. Then I want to take this whole folder and back it up on my USB thumb drive. So I plug that into the back of my computer, careful not to unplug any cords. The reason I don't plug this in at the beginning of class is because then I'll forget about it and leave it in the class. So I plug it at the end when I need to back up, and then I drag and drop my whole folder onto it. And because there is already a copy of that, it's going to ask me, do I want to stop, replace, or merge? I want to merge them, which means all the newer files will be added to it. Because I made 626 megabytes of new files that need to get added.
And then I have it backed up on my computer in the classroom and on my USB drive, and I can work on it at home in PhotoP if I want to. Right. I will post our videos, and we make good progress today.